The next upcoming select board meeting is Thursday, July 6th at 5.30. Do we have any select board comments, announcements? I would like to give recognition particularly to Carly, uh, who did a great job of arranging the retirement party for Ron Beale. It was a good time. A lot of, uh, a lot of neighbors showed up. People stayed and chatted with one another for a long time. It was really a very nice community event. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. I we will get right into business item number one, state road drainage. <clears throat> the select board met with representatives from Maine DOT to discuss drainage concerns on the state road in the general area between New Meadows and Bull Rock. The select board will share the outcome of the meeting and next steps. I guess I, th I think the biggest revelation to me was what we, the concern was the water rising across the street from where the parking lot is now. Looks like it's rose maybe 18 to 24 inches. And we were trying to figure out what caused it, what came to light was apparently DOT put their latest color drainage on top of the other drainage. We thought it was a beside underneath or whatever, but apparently it is on top of that, which may be causing the rise in the water on the other side of the road. No beavers, huh? No beavers. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so the representative from MDOT um, allowed us how it would take a while, um, because the reason they put the, um, they put the newest uh, covered in at such a high level was because in the meantime between the first and the last one that they put in um, utility lines including the natural gas line that goes to uh, BIW were put in there so they put rather than dig under they put it over and of course that's where all the that's where all the problems started in 2016 when we stopped having a little skating rink on the State Road, Bull Rock Road intersection, but collateral damage was then apparent. So MDOT allowed us how it would take some time to get all the permitting taken care of and the utilities to move their lines, um, but that the problem would be alleviated. He estimated one and a half to two years to get all the permits taken care of, which is unfortunate, but um, it was nice to have the source of the problem identified and a plan to go forward for a long-standing problem. So with this hope, that will be one now. It sounds like also accepted full responsibility for it, so it's not which is nice to have that confirmed officially. They did? They did. They, did. They, did. they did? they did. So it was actually very nice to attend a meeting where all parties wanted to work together to come to resolution and they actually did that. Um, sometimes that's very hard to do and they did a great job of that. So hopefully 18 months to two years that problem will be resolved. And Mr. Paquette can get his land back. Mm -hmm. Article number two. Uh, anybody, any questions, comments on state road? Business item two, 432 Mountain Road drainage. The select board conducted a site visit with the road commission after following up on complaints made by the property owner. The select board will discuss the outcome of the site visit. A subsequent freedom of access act request submitted by the property owner is included for review. Can you tell me who came down? All yep. three of us. Yep. Okay. Marilyn, do you Marilyn, do you want to? Um, we looked at the we looked at the situation and saw what was being identified as an issue. Um, and um, 
Steve's plan was that that the um, existing ditch could be deepened, um, and that was the most immediate situation. Um, the road commissioner is 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 able to make those those determinations. We went down there mostly because we hadn't seen the site before, so. Um, but so they talking about doing what they're going to do with the culvert itself since it's all rusted out and the ditch across my property. There was there was no plan made for the culvert. Okay. So what yeah. was the first attempt would be to dig that ditch on the if you were driving down to your house on the right hand side. They need to dig the ditches the whole road. Did you look at the ditches coming down? We did. Some of the problem is ledge. So it's going to take some time to go down through it. What you would like to do is drain that down over the hill yes. from your house. Mm -hmm. Not sure. It's going to try digging and see how far he can get and see if the ledge... He's going to hit all rock because it was rock lined by Arthur back in the day. He dug that all out, lined it with rock, right. along with what's going across my property. But it all depends on how deep, how big, how wide that ledge okay. is and if he can get it to drain down over or not. So until he starts that project, I don't think we really have any answers other than knowing that. That's so that's all the plans on doing? Well, we don't know until he does it what else there is to do. I mean, we have to start somewhere and see where the water goes before we keep throwing things out. But it's obvious where the water is coming down that it's not run, it's not natural. And if he continues with that, I just want him to prove it because I can prove it's not. Well, so, the, the, I just, no, I'm just saying, if you're going to put a plan together, a plan includes everything that might take place, so everything can be looked at. The plan should be digging out the hill, that's a and, huh, the ditch. D ditching, the, ditching the road. Right, ditching, ditching the road, road. Yeah. and what any future plan could be about coming across the property and with the culvert. That's a plan. The culvert, I don't know a whole lot of culverts, but we have the road commission, we have other people. Look at this, this is a plan, this is where we're gonna start. Okay. Can you send me that in writing and I'm say that partner. everybody, selectman, code officer, everyone who agrees to it is not there. The code officer well, I, is this not channel there. has a habit from we, since I've gone through all the reports, it has a habit of saying, if an agreement's come to, well, all of a sudden, two selectmen don't agree, so it's going to get thrown out. Or the code enforcement officer wasn't there and doesn't agree, so that plan's no longer there. The code enforcement officer does not have any jurisdiction over roads. Hmm. Okay. The code enforcement has, officer has jurisdiction over shoreland zoning, Houses being built. Well, why not consider shoreland? Absolutely. So, wouldn't he need to be there? No. You're no. not building anything. It's 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 a road. We we need it. We need to follow the process. Let's see how the first procedure works okay. on ditching the roads, and then if that doesn't work, there'll have to be another review. But we believe that this is a good solution to get the water down the hill. Yes, it might get it down the hill, but it's still like a waterfall coming across. I have so much water in my yard. I have to weed whack over a third of it because my lawnmower won't go across it anymore. And my house is now starting to suffer damage from all of that water soaking in because everything underneath is quiet. There's no and sense. I need a resolution as to what's going to happen with that portion of it. Then this is our first step. We don't have step two. We don't throw a hundred things at a plan. <coughs> That's, then, not, that's two things. And then you better go back and figure out which one worked and which one didn't. So we, we gonna know stop. what's going to work and what's not going to work. We feel the addiction is going to be a positive solution. Okay. Let's give it a chance. Okay. Or let's move on to the Let's, let's give it a chance. Okay. I need to know who the time is. Can you? Um, business so item number three. The final yeah, geo... Excuse me, you guys can exchange a piece of paper or something? Uh, 
The final GOPIF cohort vulnerability assessment for the towns of Hotsville, Pittsburgh, and West Bath was submitted by GEI consultants. The report is included for review. Among other findings throughout the report, the recommended improvements for survival landing are in Table 6. Recommended site improvements and next steps are in Table 7. Next steps in project development. The plan for the landing is incomplete pending a boundary survey by an insured and licensed surveyor. This is separate from the scope of the GOPIF project. Christine, do we have that survey? The boundary survey? Mm -hmm. No, it's incomplete, which is what Kathy just read. I thought it was completed, we were just waiting. No, this is the results of the vulnerability assessment. And if you read through the report that I gave you on the last page, it says this plan is incomplete pending property boundary information provided by the town from a licensed surveyor. So the surveyor, the survey has been completed, the report's not been generated. Is that accurate? No, that is not accurate. The vulnerability assessment has been completed. The next step is the next step is to move to the boundary survey. And you're saying boundaries of the road? Yes. Yes. Because yes. I know. Uh, I'm sorry, can I just have yeah, if you're if you speak, can you introduce yourself? I'm Christine Smith. Thank you. So yeah, I saw Ron down there a couple of times and he came back and redid it last fall. So that wasn't acceptable to whom? It was let me back up a little okay. bit. We received a grant in the amount of $5,000 from the Department of Marine Resources yeah. to conduct a boundary survey yeah. at Sabina Landing so that we could determine the boundaries of the road because we do not have that on file of the town. At least it's not as far as we can find. Um, oh my gosh. I part of that agreement is that we use a licensed and insured surveyor. Mm -hmm. Initially, we thought we could use Sagahawk Surveying, which is Ron Beal, mm -hmm. um, but realized later that he does not have insurance. Okay, that's So that. we need to locate another surveyor um, in order to use those grant funds to finalize the boundary survey. Right, and you can't use like my property survey? No. No, you need to do it at. Uh, it's specifically to the road. I'm done. Yeah. Um, yeah. The boundary of the road, how yeah. far does from the center line yeah. do we yeah. go? I know. I see. Yeah. So it's, it's, I'd rather have it if we're going to resolve this an yeah. official boundary survey of the parking lot on the road the, or the beach area on the road. It's not right. a matter of preference, it's a matter of what must be done. Yeah, no, that's okay. I didn't know. So, so do you have an estimate of, of when that can happen or what we're doing? Well, we have reached out to a couple of different surveyors um, in the interim. This report was supposed to be finalized by GEI probably in January. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the lead person on the project became very ill. So the project was delayed. Um, initially, we thought that a surveyor in the army was going to work with us to complete the survey. Um, but I think because so much time had passed that they decided not to take the project. So part of what I want to talk about tonight is number one, your level of interest in completing the survey. And I think that we probably want to do that. I think we need to do it. To and then to ask if you want to go out to bid or if you want to just use whatever license survey or we can come up with. So what is the estimate of cost on a survey? We don't have an estimate. So they're paying 5000 If it goes over, we have to pay the rest. Right. So, well, in the $5,000 price point from our grant, what have we spent in this allocation for the report versus what's the remaining? The report was a separate grant. So that grant has been paid down. There's nothing left to use in the GOPIF grant. So there's another 5000 for the survey? Yes. I think we should, uh, our, our current purchasing policy, anything over 5000 needs to 
go to bed. So what is that five thousand now? We're paying a total grant and plus. Well, if it goes over five thousand, I think we've exceeded our our purchasing policy, generically speaking. Um, what I would suggest is that um, you uh, continue your informal survey, and if it is not fruitful, then we advertise more widely. There are local surveyors who have recently submitted bids for other work, um, perhaps reaching out to them. And we could have an official decision in our July meeting. That should be timely enough, isn't it? I think so. Um, because I don't know what a surveyor charges, and I don't know how much time it would be, so it would be interesting to find out some kind of an estimate. If the $5,000 is sufficient, then... Yeah, and based on conversations with Ron and with Barney, the lead consultant, um, I believe it'll come in less than 5000 but there's no way to know that for sure. Right. Um, and there's still a possibility that the surveyor in Yarmouth will still want to work with us. And Barney said that even though there's no money left in the grant, he would contribute to that survey. Okay. So if we can make that deal work out, I think that would probably be in our best interest. Well, you my interest would be in facilitating accomplishing that survey as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. who, do, who do we have to survey the boundary line for Bath and West Bath? Would it make sense to reach out to them as well? We could. I mean, we just, we've got a transaction going on with them as we speak that may help expedite. Yeah, there's a possibility. That would be sidelines. Yeah, I'm sure they're wrong. Yes, I'm Lauren Swanson, uh, Cameron of Green Resource. Um, <clears throat> for people that make a living off that landing, it's our last deep water landing, um, would like to actually request it to repair the landing to a, just, I mean, not do a water work, right? just like you did in years past. Just enough so that you don't have, it's, you know, you don't have to have that big bump at the end. Um, and we can personally finance that buy the shellfish harvesters um, and have it repaired, but I was told that I could not do that because of this ongoing. I think we survey. need to wait till the survey is completed because we're trying to survey the land as it sits. I don't know if we should change any of that until that happens. What, what, were, you, what were you all thinking about doing? Well, I was going to give conservation time for people to come down and do what we did last time. All we did was put a Small amount of cement at the base of the landing, so that when you back the boat down, it doesn't come over the edge of the landing. It's all washed away at this point. Somebody put some big heavy equipment down there, and it cracked up. So we just want to replace it. That's all. So it wouldn't be changing the lines of the. Nothing. It it's just, just, just the same landing. Just get rid of the bottom. And it gives me an opportunity to give people conservation time. So. Right, and, and it has been done before. Oh yeah, it's been done four or five times. So. Jeff. Jeff Moore. Yeah, we've been doing this for on and off for 20 years down there. We just did it a couple of years ago. So somebody's dropping some very big mortar blocks down there, and there, there's one still left. I'm guessing that must have been more broken up. The concrete that we had put on before, the, the ready mix cement. Is, uh, it's just all broke away now. We just want to redo it. That's all. Is Not that, changing anything. Was that caused by heavy equipment putting moorings and stuff in down there? Well, I, that's, I mean, our trucks don't do it, but there's big mooring blocks that have been coming in down there, so yeah. we can only assume that's what broke it up. Yeah, and I see a lot of uh, big floats. that hardly make it down. Yeah, <laughs> but coming in on the flatbeds. Yeah, it's yeah, not us. And then yeah. it's a. Uh, but there's probably a. That's going to be 1,500 or 1,800 pound block. There's still at the landing right now. It's been there for a week or so. Yeah. That one probably helped along with breaking the bottom up. So the, there's, there wouldn't be any way that that would interfere with any future improvements with, no. No. with the landing? No, it's no. just at the very end. Everything that we just we keep repairing at the very bottom forever. We just want to redo it because it all got broke up. Mm -hmm.
seen that once more. And that's yeah. really what we want to keep our eye on now is future improvements. Because once we have this boundary survey in place, right. and we're sure of what we own, then there are grants available to make significant improvements down there. Right. Because part of the findings in this report is that the ramp is too steep and too narrow, and it's not a straight shot, and it's just not safe. Right. So if we can come up with a plan, right. um, it would make sense to pursue that. But is this a good thing to do in the meantime? And yeah, have any like, objections? All we're, re all we're requesting is that we can fix it so we can use it. And it's not like we're doing anything different to the lane. Same, same, same way, the same for 25 years. Same um, just so that the commercial fishermen can use it. And uh, there's only, I mean, has nothing to do with the parking issue. It has nothing to do with it. Just the fact that we need to use it. It's the last one we got. And you're not asking for any further um, budgetary considerations? Nope. I will pay for it myself. Well, we have money, don't we? Yes. There is money in, in, in the uh, budget. Yeah. But I, we've all decided yeah, we will pay for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> we need it. Do we have, and I'm not trying to get off to but we do have a sign going down there soon? We do. What I did is I waited until after town meeting until the changes to the <coughs> Marine Resources Ordinance was approved. Okay. I took that language and I had it put on the sign. Okay. So the sign hasn't come in yet, but it will. But it's going to work. Yeah. So can I set up an appointment? I mean, can I set up a time date to have us do this? Or am I not allowed to? Uh, I think it's town property. And, uh, well, that's the issue. It's town property. So you, do, you decide whether it's appropriate or not. I move that the Marine Resources Committee mm -hmm authorized to, to perform the repairs to the landing in the same way that it has been done in the past. Thank you. And not to exceed the current no, the footprint by width. We're just going to get rid of the bone. Right. That, that's as it has been done. It has been done in the past. Just yeah. like two years ago we did it. Second that motion. All in favor? Thank you, ladies. Any other discussion? Are you interested in reviewing any of the recommended improvements? You know what? I'm I'd like to read it. Amazed with because I have read it. Is the amount of information that's in here? Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, it, it is. It is. There's great a lot here. Job that people did and things I never do. Um, I would recommend anybody who has any interest, either marine resources, survival residents. Um, take the time to really look at it. There is a lot of good information in here. And I would be happy to email the report to anybody who's interested yeah. in yeah. reviewing it. Well, we can yeah. with the rest of it. Yeah. The um, Road Commission it no longer exists. The Road Committee, I mean, it does not. Hmm. Um, so uh, just one other, just to go on record, and we said this last year that but particularly this year, in the last week, I've noticed, you know, I have the driveway to the right, Seal Cove, and you know how everybody has to turn around, and, I'm, and I know they back up my driveway, but it's actually not my part of the driveway, it's your part. <laughs> and somebody got stuck and spun out, and so, you know, I'm negotiating these bumps along the way down there. So, um, just want to go on record that that is, you'll find that that's part of the town. It's right where, right at the edge where my driveway meets the ramp. And it just gets spun out of people's big trailers with probably the floats on it, bang up and dig a hole in my drive, and where I have to drive. So you need right. some builders. Can you well, it just, it bit? needs to be monitored. You know, we've, in the past, when we do our driveways, we used to go down to where, we're glad we paved down to the ramp because we used to maintain that whole area because it was potholes, and now we have a lot of neighbors who live nearby, but when it was just us there 25 years ago, in the winter, it would be potholes and frozen and stuff. So that's something to put on the maintenance, you know, okay. with the ditching and stuff. Uh, we can go with the shovel and move it, but again, it's steep, so when people back up with a trailer, it hits it. 
Now, I'm, I'm sorry, can you tell me your name? Christine Smith, Thank you. 20 Seal Silco. Cove Drive. 20 Seal Cove. Yeah. So, um, there is some runoff things there. We're going to try to get somebody to dig a better ditch on our part of the driveway, but where it hits you, it kind of, you know, with that big rain, we had some gullies. Mm. Everywhere. Yeah, I know. It was, it was a big deal. We, we learned where all the problems are in that big rainstorm. You know where the water goes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and Jeff wants. Hey, you're not going to see a cold if you're driving straight into the land and you guys are up on the right. right. Yeah. 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 If, if no one has any objection, we're going to have 20 of us down there and we can take some shovels and rakes and make any holes that we see there. Yeah. Most of us don't back up. I mean, I don't, but. Um, yeah, no, so you guys can go left and we back. We probably did. So yeah, yeah. Figured that, I mean, if no one has any objections, then we're going to have 20 of us down there. Yeah. Not everybody has to be mixing concrete. We can yeah. scrape okay. in any holes or anything. Just keep it easy. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm just, in the future, something's got to be. Yeah. Jeff, I appreciate that. And I had still appreciate it. Miss Smith, because I think it's very important that we work together uh, exactly. as a community. Nine, nine, so nine, nine, I appreciate two. the offer. Okay. Um, All right. More yes. of that might get us more of what we want to maintain rather than the wild the roads that got too bad. Yep. So I appreciate both of you. Mm -hmm. And Steve's gonna go down and look at that. There's um there's two sides of Samino Road of gullies. I've got to actually took pictures of me didn't get a chance to print it. But there are the, the new Savannah Road is cracking on mm -hmm. on both sides. The road, the actual road base. It would be so great if you could email it to me. And yeah, then I, could could, I took them on the way. But yeah, that'd be great. And Suzanne, just that one thing too. When they did the AA, they didn't have any graceful way to uh, have Gulls Way. It's it's like a <laughs> it's, it's a, a drop. Yeah. Um, and and I don't sorry. know what was that. Can I just have you identify yourself? Oh, great. I'll see. Sorry, uh, three Gulls Way. Uh, but uh, the, I don't know if the they can. Yeah, the they can do something with gravel or something to just make it um, yeah. a little more graceful. I've seen an SUV. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've seen like delivery trucks get stuck there and stuff. So it's, it's called uh, dig your own path. There. That's what yeah. we all did down the end. We, we went out when it was rainy and pushed up some stuff and made a slight ramp. And I've been looking at yours thinking, aren't you guys getting sick of that? Just get it done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's just no material. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we want to proceed? Do we want to have people go look at this? When they see it, it's a future. No, I'm talking about the report. Oh, no, I'm talking about the room. Yeah. Um, I think having, um, taking some more time to, maybe we should have a, uh, a book club on this. Can you go to the posted slowly? Can you act on the site? This is if you go to our homepage on the calendar and click on this meeting, it's part of the information packet. Yeah. But anyone can email the town clerk and I'll get that sent out. Yeah, no. Yeah, I think a, you know, we're on the topic of parking and landings, and they actually recommended new landings in Winning Bay and Birch Point. So intriguing that I've never seen before. Because it's really hard to have a discussion. Yeah, and there's so much stuff to digest yeah. to even know what we're talking about. If you have limited time, tables six and seven are the most. Do you put pages on? I think. But the pages are not numbered. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yes, they are. Um, table six is on page seven. Oh, is it? And, oh, okay. I'm looking at the. Uh, yeah, it's on the number slot. And table seven is on page 14. Is there any. So we need to get the, we really need the boundary survey before we can make any further decisions. Okay, so why, let's get the boundary survey, let's, all of us who have any interest take a look at this and yeah. get that together after the boundary survey. Yeah, and when we have that, there's a rolling grant program issued by the state, the Small Harbor Improvement Project, um, which is perfect for West Bath. Um, I can think of a number of ways that we can use funding from them to improve the situation. How deep is the grant? Well, I'm not sure what the limit is. Um, it's a fair amount of money, though. And, you know, nothing will ever be ideal down there because of the limited space that we're working with, but we could definitely improve what we have. Well, I just, I mean, if you look at it, it, I'm curious to see what they felt 
of, of, of place in Birch Point. What they got other access points that they found. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, here's they didn't say. I didn't no, say where it was. I didn't say where. Maybe because isn't that, isn't that, that, that ramp that's kind of on the uh, New Meadow side? That's kind of people put their floats. I don't think there's a, there's an access point. Is there an access point? There, there is point? a place where they. I don't know. There's no there town. Is, there is no. There is no town. No 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 What's that? So we're the same. It's a lot of parking. Town parking. It's a situation. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. kind of around the corner before you get to the hill. So there is such thing as a program. One cop. I always wonder about that. Stacking up parking. That's a good one. Yeah, like an elevator. Yeah, like an elevator. You just have to push a button and come on. What was the name of that grant, Christine? Ship. Ship? Small Harbor and Element. Ship. Not a tea. Okay, so Christine's going to take the lead on the boundaries and um, see if she can find someone who's willing to do it in cost and hopefully. Yeah, we have until the end of December to send that grant, so I think that's important information too. We do have some time. While we're, I, I know, is there anything else for us I know? I know that we do have the sign that's coming down as soon as it comes in. I know we've promised you guys it for a long time. Um, getting the wording right is very, very important. One little word can. Change the meaning. I'm Susan McDonough. I don't remember what the sign says. <laughs> it's been too long. It's being. It's actually being reworded based upon the old parking sign. Is that what we're talking about? Well, there's a, there's there's access timelines. Um, it's there's a, we have a new um, ordinance. Right. Yeah, so the language of the new ordinance is going to be now put on the sign. It's correct. Okay. So I don't think that would be too much longer. The other, the other thing is that with our shellfish warden now being deputies from the Sagahawk Sheriff, that if there is a blatant violation, there, there would be some recourse. Although they're not going to enforce the ordinance, mm -hmm. but they can talk nicely to people. <laughs> and sometimes a police officer speaking nicely to you is persuasive. I mean, they've been able to deter um, unlicensed clamors that have been accessing that location. By, so by possession. Yeah. They, <laughs> they can enforce that law. So, there, so there's pieces, but there's the, mm -hmm. that, even that infringement mm -hmm. in our neighborhood has, are, there's things that are going away to make it more of the, what it should be. Yeah. I guess that's what we have with that. They don't enforce parking. They do talk nicely to people who may be not being nice to their neighbors. Okay. Just in the interest of peace. Peace officers. Mm -hmm. But they they are authorized to enforce the shellfish laws because that's mm -hmm. why we call them shellfish wardens. So there is a difference, but their presence will make some difference, I think. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna set up an appointment. Um, on our next shelf would be the end of the last Thursday of this month for us to work on the land. And it'll probably be in July. And not meet until September. We usually take July and August off. Right. Yes. Okay. Any more comments, questions under Savannah Landing Resiliency Assessment? Okay, item number four. Annual and committee appointments. I move approval of the appointments as presented in our packets. I second that. All in favor? Shall we read the aloud? For the record? Yeah, please. I should. Uh, yep, yeah, go right ahead. Uh, Constable Jonathan Bean, Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director. Jonathan Bean, Code Enforcement Officer E911, Addressing Officer, and Local Plumbing Inspector Jonathan Bean. 
annual animal control officer, Todd Stead, harbor master, Joseph Valancourt, public access officer, Carly Perry, road commissioner, Stephen Reno, shellfish warden, deputy Al Huntington, and deputy Garrett Olson, tax collector and treasurer, Julia House, town clerk, Carly Perry, investment committee, three-year term, Paul Coombs, Board of Appeals, five-year term, Ashley Randall. Yes. While she's signing that, I, I just want to ask a question. We talked about last year, um, one of our road concerns was the geese. Mont State and New Meadows, and maybe trying to get the state to put up a sign. Do we know where that ever went? No. I'm not the one who made contact with them. We talked about trying to get, talk to the state and put them up, up a sign about geese crossing. Caution geese. Yeah, I think the should be listening to that. Okay, can we just check and follow up on that because it's presenting itself as a problem, and as we talked about increased traffic on the Meadows and Route 1, I could see some significant accidents. So that album's geese season. Geese season. As we talk about the traffic on the New Meadows and Route 1, that there was some discussion at the planning board meeting on Tuesday. And some of that dialogue was about uh, the traffic and the timelines of school letting out, of the IW letting out, um, and maybe changing the timing and the light so there's a longer green during the BIW departure. Um, but there's also some other concessions that perhaps BIW could stagger some of their scheduling. Um, I thought we were going to table that until we find out about the entrance and exit. Yes, I was, I was, I was going to recommend actually that perhaps um, the select board would consider grabbing some time on the BW schedule to see how they can better support our town's needs um, and, and what they can help with the traffic and what we're seeing right now. I think that would be very beneficial as we try and figure out some of the next steps. I don't think the yard can do anything. Staggering. Um Times would be also a union issue, so it would be take a lot for them to change. Well, we can still have a conversation to yeah. see what can be done to support the community because um, there's there's definitely timelines and traffic and people. And I just see if there's other other things that we can do to support the town. I think that's where I put it. Yeah. As we head into Kathy, when we talk about just a global decision, I'd like to. See if we can gather other information to do that. And we should probably just table for a future agenda to find mm -hmm. out where that's going to go before we step in. Yes. Mm -hmm. We would need, I think, further discussion on this board about such a thing. So the only thing I was asking, those piece. God knows, because there's so many babies with them right now, but you yes. can just see the traffic slam on the brakes, and um, mm. I'm just here in a good position to observe. Now, and I don't know if the state would do that, so if you, or if you don't mind asking Julie if she's just checked into it, so she could. Yes, they may not, and that's fine. They say no, they say no, but yeah, yes, we can do due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Would there be a possibility that the town could do something like that, or be, because that's a state assistance? Yeah, we can do that. Both of them are actually, because they're state and they're running meadows in the state, so oh, it's all okay. state. Have you talked to the geese? I think it would be nice for them to contribute. There you go. Yes. The, yeah, yes. Oh, those um, Because they make, I mean, poultry people make signs for private ups and down. You can put them on your land, your own driveway, saying goose crossing, chicken crossing, goat crossing. Yeah, yeah, she hit the nail on the head. I was going to say, why don't you ask the guy that lives there, maybe he'll let you put them on. He just got me. Anybody there now? Yeah. 
Yeah, but she's, <laughs> it's probably not appropriate right now. <laughs> Those are cute, though. They are cute. Cool. My only concern is as we get a tourist, yeah. um, they have no idea that we have wild geese running. They're doing something quirky to really bring their attention That's to true. it. That's true. Maybe yeah. bring yeah. Like I have our new, our new <laughs> summer festival, the West Bath Goose Party. Yeah. which is an amended version of LD 2003, the Affordable Housing and Accessory Loan Unit Law. Um, so that has been postponed for enactment for town meeting communities until July 1st of next year. Um, so even though we're ready to go and we have the language, we do not have to adopt anything until next year, which I think is really good timing since we'll be reviewing the land use ordinances anyway. There was information that they would actually assist in the payment that yes. they will need. So, right. so if there's, there's any expenses that. involved, we can pass 100%. them along. We can totally do that. Well, I am glad to see that they've slowed that train down just a little bit because um, we need more time. And, the, and th thank goodness that um, Representative. Kepler actually kept on it. Um, we really need to continue to watch this because as we have identified, not, every, not every town has um, acceptable land for such a measure. And I would encourage the community too, this is really going to affect you to keep an eye on LD 1706. That could have a huge um, effect on our town, so it might be something you want to keep yourself. Are you familiar with what that is? You could tell, you could tell us more. So it's essentially accessory dwellings that every lot, regardless of its size and, and zone area, um, may have one accessory dwelling at a minimum, potentially two, if you're in a growth area. So overnight, the demand of services and whatnot in this community could change dramatically um, in what we have and what we would need. So just keep your ear tuned. If you have questions, we can try to find the answers. Yeah, um, I'm just curious about what exactly is an accessory dwelling. I like that. Another something that you could rent. Is yes. Oh, it's designed to rent. It's oh, actually okay. designed to provide housing. So it, um, you, you have to have. In theory. Um, if you have septic, you have to, your septic field has to accommodate whatever you're adding. Your well has to be able to produce enough water to accommodate whatever you're adding. So there's things that have to happen. Um, most of West Bath is on uh, private water and sewer. Right. Um, but it's designed to provide affordable housing wherever that may be. So we, we actually have an accessory dwelling right now. It's a, almost for like an in-law caregiver mm -hmm. as part of our ordinance. It's mm -hmm. a completely different, that you can't have um, a stove, an oven mm -hmm. in it um, if it's not approved every five years, but these are full-fledged living structures that um, can be added to any parcel so it needs to set back another, another mm -hmm. items. Which could be a good idea, except when your house is and the law is on a ledge, mm -hmm. um, and we have a limited aquifer, and so those those kinds of issues are troubling. If your town is built on a ledge, mm -hmm. which always is, mm -hmm. and if in fact these accessory dwellings are affordable, and then you have to think about affordable everything affordable. else too. Affordable for education, mm -hmm. yeah. transportation. Yeah. Oh, We're almost at capacity at our K to five school. So, I mean, so there's so many things that, and you can't. You have to accommodate that in theory in a year. And is that supposed to also increase the income on the tax 
real estate tax side? It would it would have that effect because yes. anything would be taxed, but um, yeah. you can't build a new school for fifty people in a year. Yeah, yeah. I mean there's just stuff that can't too hot, too fast. It's, and, yeah. it's yeah. Okay, business item number six, future agenda items. Um, committee, um, committee thing? Yes, that will be July 6th. I think that we should probably tackle a number of administrative items at the next meeting. Um, I know that we've been focusing a lot on roads, um, but there are other internal administrative items that we need to wrap up. So we should really be ready and focus for the next meeting. Is there any material that we will need before the next meeting? Um, you have the policy on town committee procedures. I will do my best to get the packet out earlier than normal so that you can see the rest of the items. And are, are we, we had the discussion about um, civil discourse within meetings. Are we thinking about including that in the committee? Or having this well, the code of conduct was already approved by this board, and I think that covers the civil discourse part. Okay. Um, yes. Do you want to have people sign those? Or yes, that's, that's why I want to get this rolling. Because 1st of July, or you know, immediately following your meeting, I want to get everything out for signatures. regards to the Seekus Point subdivision that we uh, had to endure at 76 Mountain Road and the disruptions. Uh, the, West, the Town of West Bath Planning Board's unilateral approval in 2019 without any abutter notification of the major changes was inappropriate and abuse of their authority. How can the West Bath Planning Board members justify not giving abutting landowners any notification of the major changes proposed at Seekers Point subdivision when abutters were properly notified of the original low impact subdivision plan? As an abutting property owner, we are, were 100% deceived by the West Bath Planning Board when we agreed to the original plan that was presented to abutters at the planning board meeting we had received notification to attend regarding the original proposed Seekers Point subdivision development. Our lives have been ruined for five years by the West Bath Town officials refusing to do your jobs and enforcing ordinances and knowingly allowing building in violation of building permits that were issued at the Seekers Point subdivision. The West Bath Code Enforcement Officer, Administrator, and Select Board have allowed and enabled years of lawlessness and relentless disruption to occur affecting the entire area surrounding the Seekers Point subdivision. You people have been covering for John Stadler and his contractor, Reno Construction. <laughs> the abuse from the Seekers Point constant construction noise and unsightliness for years on end has caused our family great stress and irreparable harm to the point of having to move and sell a home we had planned on raising our children in at a significant loss of over $100,000. We had invested thousands of dollars and many hours improving our home at 76 Mountain Road only to be driven out by West Bath town officials refusing to hold the Seekers Point developer accountable and looking the other way while the quality of life of residents in the entire surrounding neighborhood was ruined. Our property value has been greatly diminished by the action of the Town of West Bath officials in their refusal to respond to or even acknowledge valid complaints from us as well as other neighboring property owners over the past five to six years, 
directly impacted by the Secus Point subdivision construction. Emailed complaints and concerns sent to the Code Enforcement Officer, Select Board, and Town Administrator regarding Secus Point have gone unanswered and ignored for years. My wife, as well as several other affected property owners, have testified at select board meetings over the years to only be completely ignored, given lame excuses, empty words, and stall tactics, tactics by the West, board, West Bath Select Board members. Amongst them. In recent contact with State Representative Hepler, we were told the town of West Bath Select Board will work with us and actually be addressing the Seekers Point issues. As relief for the Town of West Bath, Select Board, Code Enforcement Officer, and Town Administrator knowingly and willingly making our home unbearable to live in for over five years by completely disregarding and ignoring valid surrounding property owner complaints, willing, willingly enabling and encouraging years of lawlessness and disruption to continue from the Secus Point subdivision, we are requesting a five-year refund of our property taxes that we paid at 76 Mountain Road. $40,000 from the years between 2019 and 2023. Our family has suffered greatly as a result of this abuse. We have been unable to enjoy any peace and enjoyment of our property at 76 Mountain Road during these years to the point of being forced out of our own home. The town of West Bath has stolen five years of our lives when our children were the youngest, at their youngest, a time which should have been the most enjoyable time of our lives has been robbed from us. Over the past five to six years, we have accumulated hundreds of hours of recorded video and audio evidence from many different times of day and night of the relentless morning to night, six to seven day per week, heavy equipment and construction vehicle noise and disruption from Seekers Point subdivision construction. Since June of 2019 and immediately following our original complaints to the West Bath Administrator and Code Enforcement Officer, we have been keeping accurate written logs and journals supporting documentation of this ongoing abuse. We have also uh, been working with an attorney who believes we do have some standing for a civil case against the town of West Bath. However, as an act of good faith, we have decided that requesting the town of West Bath refund the tax money for the years that they have ruined our lives would be a fair settlement so we can all just move on from this quickly and our family can put the nightmare of living in this town behind us, as opposed to having to put down a $10,000 retainer and filing a long and drawn out lawsuit for our damages. If the town of West Bath continues to be unwilling to accept responsibility for their blatant disregard for the damages they have directly caused our family, we fully plan to sue for civil damages far in excess of the current relief we are seeking. We will also be handing over the hundreds of hours of audio and video recordings along with all supporting documentation regarding this to the uh, media outlets, that, any media outlet willing to listen. <coughs> the Town of West Bath elected and appointed officials are not above the law and need to be held accountable for the damage you have caused and the absolute hell you have put my family through. We suggest you select board members, administrator, and code enforcement officer discuss the matter with a taxpayer-funded lawyer you've all been hiding behind for years. Depending on my work schedule, my wife or I will plan on attending the next select board meeting to find out your decision. If the West Bath town officials think they can just destroy the lives of longtime residents, you are mistaken. I promise you, whatever it takes, we will not go away until justice is served and West Bath Town officials answer for what you've done to our family. We have done absolutely nothing to deserve the abuse we have endured for years at the, towns of, at the hands of the town of West Bath. That's all I have to say.